you're there ladies and gents, how's it going? Um, I've got an issue. My well, well, Gutsy V7 doesn't have a rear wheel on it at the moment. And I'm not putting that one on it, I'm putting the one over there that's off camera. Um, and it's a little bit wider because I've gone with a 150 rear tyre on it. Which means I've got to take this uh, shaft drive apart to be able to get the wheel on because of clearance issues on the uh, cush drive side of things there. Um, so I thought it was a good opportunity to show you how simple it is. Although I don't know how simple it is because I've not done it before. But yesterday someone told me it's dead simple and it's possible to do it without actually spilling any of the oil out that's in here when I detach it from these four bolts here. Someone also mentioned that the whole thing can explode, pour oil everywhere and all the bits end up all over the floor and I won't work out how to get it back together again. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. <laughs> but hey, if I can't teach you how to do it, I can teach you how not to do it. <laughs> um, so yes, I'm going to stick the wheel in. Um, I've got to do some disassembly um, because when I took the wheel out it was a lot easier. I could have just, just squeezed it out. Um, but putting it back in is harder. Uh, so previously I took that shock off and that exhaust pipe. Um, I'm actually going to have to take this shock off, which might mean that I put that one back on again. Um, and if I'm taking this shock off, I'm probably going to have to take this exhaust pipe off as well. So I'm actually going to do that off camera because it's a belt here and a belt here to take the, so uh, to take the shock off. And the exhaust pipe is pretty straightforward too. Um, but what we want to do is see the actual bit for disassembling this to make sure you don't get oil everywhere. So I'm going to uh, do a little bit of off camera stuff. And then uh, when I bring you back, we'll start looking at this. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> Keep that boy. Down. Right then, so I've removed the shock off here and the exhaust pipe just because it was in the way. Um, replaced the shock on this side just to hold the swing arm up so it doesn't drop down. Uh, what we've got here is four nuts which I need to remove and then this should come off. Um, but it's full of oil. <laughs> so from what I've been led to believe I should be able to just take it off and just it should be okay but I don't know I think I'm gonna make a mess I don't wanna um, and I don't think I've got any oil to fill this back up with um, I'm not sure what specs it takes uh, so fingers crossed this doesn't go to rat crap um, I am gonna try and get something to stop the shaft all falling out from the drive here uh, because it's got a few little bits and bobs which I need to make sure all go back together the correct way now if I don't take it all out I won't need to put it all back in um, so that's the plan Right, let's find out what size these are and uh, cross my fingers. <laughs> okay, so these are all a size 30 mil spanner. Um, I've just given them a nip just to undo them slightly, just so I'm not straining and ugging an R in, in front of the camera for you. Um, but here's hoping that these all come off nicely. Now I'm only um, doing a little bit at a time and going opposite corners and stuff. Um, just because I don't want to warp anything or whatever like that. Um, don't know whether I need to do that, but I think it's good practice generally. Um, <laughs> I'm just waiting for all the oil to start peeing out. <laughs> right, these are all loosey loosey now. Okay, right, so I need to keep hold of this, which I do in my hip. Take these bottom ones out. Please don't pour oil everywhere. Now I've also got myself a little bit of um, duct tape to put over the end of the shaft to hopefully stop everything falling out. Oh. I've got a rubber mallet anyway. I can't find me rubber mallet, so um, yeah, don't do it this way. Well, these have all got little washers on them, double washers. Okay. Oh. Let's give it a little tap. I can see a little gap coming, not a lot, it's really grubby. I really wish I cleaned my bike more often. <laughs> I 
I actually wonder if this has ever come off um, because oh, I haven't had it deal the service for a long time. Um, I can't remember if it was part of the stuff that I got Baldrick to do. as I can hit it off really. I'm gonna have to find something to uh, lever it out with. There we go. Right, this is where it could all get really messy, or not. Okay. I don't even know if there's much oil left in there. Right, let's just put that to one side. And give my hands a clean, and I'll show you what we got here. Okay, so these are the splines for the, uh, the drive. Um, and then these are bearings. Um, yeah. And there's oil. <laughs> there is oil. Which is good. Suggests it's getting lubricated and it's nice and clean. Um, but yeah. Okay, so. We have the wheel, which now will just roll in, roll in, roll in, roll in. Um, but I need to put the Cush drive rubbers back in. Now the six Cush drive rubbers, they only go in one way. I'm going to just have a little inspect on them. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're okay. I probably should replace them. I mean, like they're the originals, um, the bikes, uh, are to 2012, 2013 model. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean they've not um, necessarily had an easy life either doing track days and stuff, uh, but they look in good condition, um, and I don't think there's too much play in them. So I will uh, maybe change a cush drive rubbers next time I change a tyre. Okay, so these cush drive rubbers they just go in this way, like so, like so. Sorry, it's so dark. Um, let's see if I can get you some light. I don't know if that's any better or not, but it might be. Now had I not taken this bit off, putting the wheel in, even with a standard size tyre is fiddly, because all these cush drive rubbers tend to have a habit of falling out. I'm hoping that doing it this way means that they all stay in place. Hoping. <laughs> this is the bit that I'm a bit concerned about. So, we saw how tough it was to get this out. Now to put it in means that I've got to one, put it on the cush drive, put this all together. God, it's heavy. And there come the rubbers. <laughs> I'm sure when I did my last video about doing this, someone said it would be funny to see me refitting the wheel because I just did it for taking the wheel out. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I think they had a, a good point. It's not so easy putting it back together. So you've got to get these all lined up 
There we go. Oh, easy peasy. Right, so that's like that. And then uh, I want to roll that forward there like that. But now the weird is too low. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this isn't easy at all. <laughs> um, yeah. I think I'd have preferred to have done it my other way, which would have been just to uh, let all the air out of the tyre and just put some G-clamps around that side of it just to get it around the, uh, the cush, driver, cush drive. Oh, say that, that wasn't too hard at all. Um, now the wheel isn't at all balanced very well, um, but it should be easy enough to put it back together again. Um, obviously I need to push the cush drive in further. I also need to get the axle through the wheel um, and the spacer on this side, on the, on the opposite side of it. Uh, but yeah, this isn't actually too difficult a job. Um, it's just fiddly and winter sucks doing spannering stuff. Um, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, so we've got the axle. Let's get this out of the way a little bit. Can I get you out of the way a little bit? Right, so we've got the axle. That's going to go through there. We've got a spacer, which... Uh, goes on there like that um, and then on the other side once we've got it pushed in we've got the nut and the washer um, to go through the other side of the axle there so I'm just have that to hand uh, down there I'm hoping that I can get the brake on once the wheels in place I'm hoping <laughs> It's such a juggling at this. I really wish I had a soft mallet. Right, well I don't have a soft mallet, but I do have a bit of wood and a heavy hammer. So uh, let's try tapping this in a little bit. It's sort of going in. There we go. Right, now each of these has got two washers to go on. So I do that one and then loosely tighten the nut up. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing here. Yeah, that one. No, the fiddly one. Down the back there. Cool. So now what I want to do is just tighten these up. Yeah. 
much easier with a socket. I'm rubbish at this fucking camera work, aren't I? Okay, so that's the wheel now attached to the cush drive. Ah, I forgot. Right, so the brake does have to go in. I'm hoping I can still get it in. Hoping I've angled that reasonably well for you. <coughs> so yeah, uh, this bit here of the brake goes through the axle. Let's uh, just uh, give them pads a little bit of a, a stretch. Push them back in a little bit, give me more wiggle room. Right, so I can get this to go over the caliper. That's fine. Ah, oh, there we go. Got it, nice. Right, now what I want to do is get the axle all the way through. Nice. And then the uh, washer and bolt just on there loosely, just so it doesn't have any chance of winding itself out or anything stupid. There we go. Oh my word, getting a sweat on and it's winter. Oh, keeping me warm, I guess. Right, that's not going to fall off now. That's good. What we need to do now is attach the brake. So let's uh, go around the other side again. Okay, so this needs to go through the bracket on the brake there, and that stops that swint spinning around. Um, I'm glad I haven't got the exhaust pipe on. <laughs> Bigger. Hey! No, wrong one. Hey! Okay, cool. Right, so let's wind this in till we can see it. Not too far. That should now wind in there, cool. Okay, that's going in that way. Cool. So that's the brake secured. Let's just give it a little pump. That's all firmed up nicely. Um, so now that's cool. Speedo sensor I didn't touch, so that's fine. Um, so now what we need to do is uh, sort the axle out. Okay, so this is tapped in as far as it goes. Like so, do out the pinch bolt. So that's done up nicely. And then what we do is we pop over the other side and with a 24 mil socket, just wind this in. Okay, next thing I need to do is put this uh, rear suspension back on. Hopefully it will be just as easy as it came off. Line up the top hole and line up the bottom one. Um, I did notice that if you get this wonky, it's a right arse to get on, but that was a piece of cake this time, so obviously I got it on straight first go. Awesome stuff. Fancy one up at the top. Let's fancy one down here. Cool. 
and then uh, tighten these up. When you do these, you should be using Loctite. I'm not at the moment, just because I haven't got any. Um, but I will check these again and put some back on it once I've got some more Loctite. Well, this bike isn't going to turn a wheel for God knows how long. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm not worrying about it at the moment. Then all you need to do is refit your exhaust pipes. Pretty straightforward. I'm not going to go through that. You've seen my videos possibly of how to change your exhaust pipes. Um, so no point doubling up on all that. Um, but that was a lot easier than I was expecting, but also a little harder than I was expecting, which I know is a complete contradiction. Uh, I do think I need to check the level of oil in this because it didn't look like there was much there, but everything was oiled. So uh, I'm saying that it's it's got oil, just not necessarily enough. Right, well, I know that wasn't the most professional of all videos and I'm sure uh, had a professional person put this video together for you, it would have looked a lot better. But I hope it was helpful and informative and showed you that it's not as scary a task as I imagined it was going to be, which is why I've never done it this way before. Um, so I'm quite pleased that we've now got a wheel on there. I know I haven't got exhaust pipes, but I'm going to put them on in a bit or maybe not, leave them off for a while, um, just so I can get some Loctite onto all these bits that I've just refitted. I've got a little bit of other stuff to do to the bike. Um, currently the rear light doesn't work and the rear indicators are a bit iffy. I'll show you the indicators. That's the indicator, a single LED um, and on that side as well. Um, so I might look into doing something that's a little bit more visible on this bike. I might not. Um, the front ones look okay, more traditional, um, but I like the back being minimal. Sorry about the wind. But yeah, there was a successful installment of the rear wheel with a 150 rear tyre. As you can see, plenty of room up the front. On this side here, it is a little bit close, um, but there's no issues of rubbing or anything like that that I've seen from it. Um, and uh, as you can see there, still gap up the front there, loads of room, loads of room. Now I don't suggest people do run oversized tyres, but I've had these on for a little bit now. Um, and actually I found the the handling improved certainly drastically over the standard fit sport demons um, i think once these tires run out i will go back to a uh, probably a 140 um, which will uh i don't know i don't know i'd really like to fit proper tires and proper wheels to this but i've already spent out on these kinio wheels now so um yeah i'm not going to be getting some 17 inches front and rear for it yeah <sighs> anyway hope you found that informative and uh, if you are doing this yourself, it gives you an idea of how to do it and some of the troubles you might come across in doing so. My bike is obviously a lot easier for getting the wheel out because it hasn't got a back end and stuff like that. You will struggle with that unless you've got your bike up a little bit higher, um, but it's not impossible. I've taken the wheels out on my V7 when it was standard um, and you can do it. It's just you need to get the bike a little bit higher. So as you can see, the V7 isn't my only motorcycle. I've got a V85 TT, which I very much love. Got this last year, just before the second lockdown. Um, I still haven't finished my running in miles on it, but I'm working on that. It should be getting its first service soon. Um, I've just finished, fitted this thing here to it. Haven't tested it yet, um, but I'm hoping that sorts the buffeting out. But I also have another thing up in my sleeve of wizardness, um, where I'm gonna try fitting a motocross number board to the front instead of the screen. Um, I've prototyped it with an old one I had kicking about, um, but I want to get something a bit tidier and the right colour. Uh, so that might be coming to a video near you soon, if you click that subscribe button, if you've not done so already. <laughs> um, so yeah, saying about that, uh, do click the subscribe button. It would be awesome if you came back and uh, saw what else I post on my channel. Um, it's a bit weird at this moment in time, I can't really get out and do very exciting ride videos, but I do go out exploring, visit castles, all that sort of stuff. And uh, with this V85 TT, I should be doing some traveling this year if we were allowed to and with the v7 um, i know it's not the most likely of track bikes but i have an awful lot of fun taking this on track days and uh, i get a van soon um, which means that once i can get out on track days i'll be able to go further afield than just brands hatch so you should see cadwell park maybe um, and some of the other circuits i don't really want to do any of the super fast ones just because it's not the right bike for that and it's a bit of a mobile chicane um, for the group that i ride in even though the bike should really be a novice group with 45 50 horsepower <laughs> Right, if you like this, give it a little thumbs up. If you didn't, you can always give it a little thumbs down. I don't mind, I don't mind at all. But please do drop in a comment. Let me know if you've got any tips that I missed in doing this. Um, maybe an easier way of getting the, uh, the, the, the shaft off 
um, where it was so stiff, or maybe um, that was the best way of doing it. I should have really used a soft mallet. Um, I've got one somewhere, can't find it. Um, and I don't think I've caused any damage to the paintwork at all. Um, so yeah, but if you do it this way, just be careful. You could end up cracking the metal or something it's horrible like that, which will cost you a load of money. Anyways, you ride safe. Take care, and I shall catch you all in the next one. Bye bye for now. Keep that bar. Drop us off. Down. Hey, no, you gotta keep that bar. Drop us off. Down.